a tutorial on grassroots organizing, nuts and bolts, no rhetoric. This is just really how you do it. We have two uh, of the greatest, uh, most successful grassroots organizers in electoral history, Ray McClendon, from now the state director of the political director of the Georgia NAACP, and uh, uh, Andrea Miller from the Center for Common Ground. The bottom line is this, on, um, we have been arguing a, 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 for years that the Democratic Party has been wasting hundreds of millions of dollars, both parties really, but uh, uh, on, on TV advertising, whereas the way to make real social change and to really win elections in the long term, and Steve Bannon on the Republican side certainly seems to have gotten this message that we need to have uh, the basis of grassroots organizing and to do it effectively as was done in 2021 against all odds. And as a, as a historian for 50 years, this is a sentence I never thought I would say, but on the basis of grassroots organizing, the state of Georgia in a single election uh, put a black and a Jewish candidate into the one of each into the United States Senate, something you would never imagine possible in the state of Georgia, but it was done. And two of the most the people most responsible for that are Ray McClendon and and uh, Andrea Miller. And the purpose of this exercise is for them to put lay down on tape, and we will have some, uh, um, we will provide supporting documents for people to do grassroots organizing especially leading into the 2022 election. Uh, th so this is gonna be basically a how-to session. Ray McClendon, uh, there are 71 people with us. If you wanna take it away, please, and then we'll turn it over to Andrea. Both of you are more than welcome to put stuff up on the screen as we proceed. So go ahead, uh, Ray. Okay, thanks so much, Harvey. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for having us, uh, giving us this opportunity today. And I'm going to let Andrea go ahead and start off uh, today uh, with the over overview and slide presentation. And then I will come in after that and make some additional comments. But she is, is carrying the, the main part of the presentation today. So I'll kick it to Andrea. Yes. And when Andrea and you are done, we'll, we'll turn it over also to, to Tonka Bricka, uh, who's waiting in California with his own experiences, and then to Joel Siegel. But go ahead, please, Andrea Miller. Uh, Ray, thank you very much. Harvey, all guests that are part of this call, thank you, thank you, thank you. What I'm going to walk you through is the past is really, really great, but we are very, very concerned about the future upcoming election. So I'm going to be walking you through what we are doing in Georgia 2022. So many of you are aware of the Georgia way where what we put together under Ray's leadership was a very collaborative approach that brings trusted community leaders together and we coordinated our work around the state. So what Ray was doing in 2020, in 2022, Center for Common Ground is doing in very, very small, small arenas, very rural in places where people don't vote. We've gone very, very local. So Team Unity, which Ray put together, is the social and the political action activists. Everybody's heard of the divine nine. Those are the nine black, uh, historical black fraternities and sororities. NAACP branch is in 2020, there were 20. In 2022, there are now 58. Wow. The Prince Paul Masons, Black Voters Matter, many, many, many other organizations. We all have the same interest at heart. 
we come together. We want to engage our voters. We want to educate our voters. And we want to make certain that they understand when, how, where they can vote. And we want to make sure they can get there. So we are very intentional that we have a common strategy that we are all literally singing from not only the same book, but literally on the same piece of music. And I know when you say that about progressives, many people are going to say, didn't really know that was possible, but we made it happen. So what I'm going to be showing you today is, and I'm going to show you some of the things very, very quickly, um, is we're going to be looking at how you execute a mobilization plan that literally is designed to turn out not tens of thousands of voters, but hopefully 100,000 voters. So let's take a look at what Georgia looks like by the numbers. There are 6,632,028 registered voters in Georgia. Nearly 2.1 million of them are Black. 270,000 are Hispanic, 200,000 are AANH, Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, 3.8 million are Caucasian, and 26,000 are Native Americans. So when we add the Black Indigenous people of color together, Georgia is 39% registered by hot voters. So let me go through that again. This is not census numbers of people living in Georgia. These are people where if they held the election tomorrow, they would be able to go and vote in it. So in 2020, um, we spent 3.5 million postcards into Georgia for voter registration and GOTV. We made nearly 600,000 phone calls for GOTV in the general, and also we worked the runoff. And we sent 741,000 text messages for GOTV and the runoff. Now, this is what we are focusing on in 2022. Everything is about being strategic. So when we look at 2020, and I've got all these things sitting on top, let me move them, all right. When we look at there, um, these are the voters that we have in Georgia, and these are the voters who voted in 2020. 2020 was a banner election year. 65% of the Black voters turned out, 56% of Hispanic voters, 67% of AAPI and 54% of Native Americans. Now, when we look at 2018, the last midterm, the numbers are almost exactly the same, except these are people who did not participate. So these are the voters that we will be going after in 2018. So as I said, we are very, very strategic. What's on the ballot? One Senate race, 14 House races, the governor, uh, the lieutenant governor, attorney general, secretary of state, superintendent of public instruction, agriculture commissioner, public service commissioner, Richard Rose is here. He's got some really amazing news about the public service commissioner, 
who is responsible for utility rates, Labor and Insurance Commissioner, Georgia's entire state house, their entire state senate, four Supreme Court seats, and eight appellate judges. Now, when we look at our target counties, all regions of Georgia are represented. We have counties in Northern Georgia, the Atlanta region, Middle Georgia, Western Georgia, Southern Georgia. 77% of the black population lives outside Atlanta. So for all those candidates who believe they could win a statewide race by just running in Atlanta. The numbers say that is just not possible. So as you can see from our planning, we are working all of Georgia. We're not going to go through this, but again, in alphabetical order, here are all of the counties where we will be targeting these counties. So we are going to be reaching out to um, 1.5 million Black voters who did not vote in 2018. At Center for Common Ground, our democracy centers are very localized, very much like the NAACP uh, county branches. We're going to send one and a half million postcards to voters. We will ramp up and do a million text messages. And we're going to make at least 200,000 phone calls. Now I've referenced democracy centers. We've got one in Hawkinsville, Georgia. We've got one in Cobb County and we've got another one in Savannah. The model that we're using is that we work with voters. We identify what are the pain points in the community. And then we develop palm cards, written materials that reflect exactly what the residents of these communities told us they were interested in. So when we talk to them about voting, we are reminding them about their very local issues. Basically, our whole idea is to turn infrequent voters into voting rights activists because now they know what they are voting for and what they want to change in their communities. Um, I'm going to skip this. We just kind of walked through a very interesting circumstance that a lot of people may not have noticed. We have a record number of Black candidates running for U.S. Senate in the South. In Georgia, we have Warnock, and I'm not even going to say the other name, um, on August 23rd is the Florida primary. Val Demings is likely going to get that race. In Alabama, we have Reverend Will Boyd. North Carolina, Justice Sherry Beasley. In Louisiana, Gary Chambers is likely to be the candidate. And in South Carolina, um, again, there will be two Black candidates on the ballot, Crystal Matthews and Tim Scott. Now, what I'm going to do is stop sharing that, and I'm going to move you to some heavy duty. This is what is in our plan. We are going to make sure that people will be able to make it to the polls. Having voters willing to get there is great, but if they're older voters, they no longer drive, don't own an automobile, or again, maybe it's because they're low income, we've got a plan to make sure that they will be able to make it to wherever it is that they want to go or where they need to go to vote. We also 
have a plan. What are all of our organizations that we're working with? How are they going to mobilize and when? So here are some of the activities. Postcard writing into Georgia begins August 12th. Phone bank starts September 15th. We're going to be running door knock canvas kids. Texting will begin August 1. They're going to be recruiting poll workers and promoting ride to the poll. Our organizations will be able to sign up and tell us what activity they want to do. And then they will be able to also tell us where they intend and are willing to do it. Now, let me just pop right back here. And we also have turnout plans where we have gone through our target counties and we have figured out where are the counties where we are very, very concerned with we really are going to have to boost turnout. Now, I come out of doing turnout for Black voters in the 1960s, where I had two uncles who were aldermen in the Daily Machine. What I know about voter turnout is turnout is something that occurs at the precinct level. So when you look at our documents, you can see we have planned this out literally on a precinct by precinct basis. Now, events. All of our organizations host events. We have built a statewide calendar where Individual organizations will be able to post their own events. The events will show up on the calendar. They will be mapped so that we will be able to know where are there events where we need to turn out our people. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Ray. Okay, thanks so much. And, and that's a great overview. And I, I want to talk about the political aspect for just a minute. Uh, we just had a major bill that was passed. And everyone knows that the reason that bill passed was because of this very work that was done in 2020 and January 5th, 2021, to get those two senators there uh, to create a 50 50 Senate so that the incoming Vice President Kamala Harris could break that tie. So we have to give credit to all of the efforts of these types of groups in Georgia in 2020 and 21 that made the Inflation Reduction Act possible and many other things. Uh, so, so that's why the work that we're doing is so critical. And that's why we need to continue support of groups like this and thanks to Harvey for, for all that you're doing. We are ramping up now. This plan will be implemented over the course of the next couple of weeks and we'll, we will be taking it into the fall. Now I wanna take one, one minute uh, or a couple of minutes here uh, to introduce uh, Richard Rose. He is the one who invited me uh, to join him in this work as uh, uh, president of the Atlanta chapter, the NAACP. He's a numbers guy. He was the one that came up initially with the 17 counties representing 77% of the work uh, of the black voters. And now we're up to 58 counties. And not only is he a numbers guy, but he's a visionary for what the work means to uh, people of color across the state of Georgia and, and indeed the Southeast. Uh, he was a named plaintiff in uh, uh, the, the uh, Public Service Commission suit. That was a great victory uh, that we just had on Friday. And I wanted uh, Harvey for him to take a moment to share that with, with you because this is the reason that the work that we're talking about here is so important because it helps us to 
uh, be in a position for this kind of, of uh, activity to occur, where we're on the cutting edge on uh, major cases that'll make a difference across the board. So, so with that, uh, Richard Rose. Good, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, it's great to be with you. Uh, as uh, Ray mentioned, we had the uh, we got a we had a a uh, decision in a case where we challenged the way Georgia elects public service commissioners. There are five public service commissioners in Georgia, each with six year terms, and they have to reside in one of five districts. But the entire state has voted on them. Uh, this uh, we filed this suit in July of 2020. I started working on 2019 uh, and finally went, had to trial on the last week in June of this year. And we got a decision on Friday, which stops, uh, takes those two, there were two seats on the ballot, one for a full six year term, the other one for the unexpired term. And both of those are now off the ballot uh, unless the uh, appeals court overturns that we don't think they have grounds, but uh, you know, we, that's part of this work. but. But as, as they mentioned, you know, without uh, active voter uh, constituency and lot the electorate, all of these offices, we have to challenge them and we can only challenge them uh, once, we, once we take away the, uh, the restrictions. But, but it, it boils down to getting voters to the poll. Uh, as Ray and Andrew talked about, you know, we looked at where the voters are. Um, you know, television commercials talk about how many people saw it and so forth. But if they're the same people, it doesn't get, doesn't help us with voter turnout. And so we'll continue to do that. Um, we will uh, keep us, keep posted. As Ray said, it's Rose versus Raffensperger. Uh, if you want to follow the news and, and uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. We'll be posting as well for NACP Atlanta. But, uh, well, but uh, we're happy to have that victory. Richard, that's great news. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Andrea, uh, Ray, and <clears throat> Richard. Uh, I want to underscore what we're doing here is we're making a document um, um, that people can use. Uh, that's a brilliant and very compelling uh, exposition uh, from Andrea. Um, Andrea will post, of course, please, Andrea, your chat, your contacts in the chat, and Ray and Richard as well. What we are doing now with the group is we are compiling a national list of grassroots groups that are doing grassroots organizing leading into the 2022 election. And our Wendy Lederman is who's on the call and is, will post her contacts in the chat, is now in charge of compiling a comprehensive list of all the groups in the country that are doing this kind of grassroots organizing or who want to do it. For example, there was a group in Kansas that very few of us knew about, a grassroots group that was, uh, a, a, which was guided to me or pointed out to me by uh, John Steiner, that was very much a part of the victory of the pro-choice uh, groups in Kansas. And this was a grassroots group outside the Democratic Party. And there are groups like this, for example, in Michigan, where we have a statewide referendum, uh, grassroots groups there gathered 750,000 signatures to put a constitutional amendment on the ballot in Michigan, again, outside the Democratic Party. So this is the kind of organizing uh, that uh, Andrea has pioneered with Ray and with Richard uh, in the crucial state of Georgia, where we again have a crucial uh, Senate race and the other races you saw. The, um, the Public Utilities Commission race is also critical. And thank you, Richard, for telling us about this crucial uh, court victory. I want to give it now to Tatanka Bricka in California. Uh, Tatanka has been working with Romero Institute and other groups on serious grassroots organizing in California. Tatanka, if you could build on what's just gone forward, uh, we greatly appreciate it. Well, thank you, Harvey. What, what Ray and Andrea are saying, and the gentleman that Ray also introduced. Richard Rose. Those, those, yes, thank you. Those principles are the same ones that 
Cesar Chavez, Dolores Huerta, learned from Fred Ross Community Service Organization, implemented to form the United Farm Workers Union, and which Dolores is using in her Dolores Huerta Foundation, organizing in the Central Valley and, and parts of Los Angeles County. It's, it's finding, it's developing the, the local leadership, which is there. It's a year round program focused around the needs of the people, around food, around healthcare, around education. And it really starts on a one-to-one. -one. They use house meeting technique is, is part of the bread and butter of this. A person gets involved individually, invites friends to a home, builds up to a larger community meeting, and then always goes back down to the small. Um, they have people who find their voice in this. And so they're active all year round. So when elections come around, of course, it's, it's part of your community. It, it's a greater family event. And so they have uh, Becenos Unidos, they have uh, neighborhood um, uh, united groups, 13 of them throughout the Central Valley, and they are working constantly. Um, they have events, they utilize music, and they're involved with the census, all this stuff that affects people. So then when the elections come around and the GOTV comes around, they know what those local issues are. And it is very local. As you say, you need to do this precinct by precinct. One, one precinct may be most interested in, in, uh, in healthcare and another precinct very nearby may be most interested in, in police violence. You know, you, it just depends. So you have to know the people, you get the people involved. And this is the work of the Dolores Huerta Foundation. Dolores organized me in 1969 and I was the coordinator of UFW in the Bay Area from the 69 to 73 with the grape, lettuce and uh, wine boycotts and went to Europe for uh, Cesar. I used the same technique. I was the first organizer for Amnesty International, then for congressional campaigns and solar campaigns, worked with Ben and Jerry. It's the same principle my whole life. So I'm very excited about this technique and, and the fact that you're using this forum to get people involved. So um, uh, uh, Tatanka, if you will put down on paper or on you know whatever we call electronic documents these days, uh, exactly your modus operandi and how it fits in with what Andrea and Ray and Richard have laid out here. We wanna make it as clear and as concise as we possibly can for people going into grassroots organizing <clears throat> exactly uh, what works and what, and what we need to do. This is uh, Wendy Lederman here in the middle. Wendy, if you'll raise your hand. Wendy is compiling mm -hmm. the um, uh, group, uh, the list of uh, grassroots organizations uh, uh, that will all have something to contribute to this. Uh, Ruth Strauss has raised your hand. Ruth, if you, your comments are always welcome. We're, if we can go to you just after these next two uh, presentations, that would be great. We have with us Joel Siegel, master organizer from John Conyers' office for many decades. And Joel, you will introduce us to the next two speakers. And then we'll open it up for a general discussion. Go ahead, Joel, please. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm so glad that Wendy's working on this project because Wendy is an amazing uh, organizer and very cool to work with. But I also wanted to say that, so Representative John Conyers was elected 40 years in a row because of relational organizing. So that this brilliant model that is you know, emanating from Georgia <clears throat> is what worked in Detroit for 40 years for John Conyers. And I had the, the great pleasure of working for Marion Barry, the mayor of Washington, D.C., who also had a relational organizing machine, which is why he got elected over and over again, both as mayor and as um, on the city council. Um, you know, we all know about Mayor Daly, not my favorite person on the planet, but Andrew knows a lot about Mayor Daly because she grew up in Chicago. She understands what they used to call the machine. Um, so what's happening in North Carolina is we have brought in um, GOTV leaders, uh, leaders from ethnic communities, leaders from the black community, uh, elected officials, and we're going to replicate the Georgia miracle in North Carolina. And Andrea and Ray are our senior consultants. So we're just going to replicate what they just went over with all of us in Georgia, which is, it's truly revolutionary. Um, and then Robert Wilson the former Undersecretary of State, 
um, will be the person who I'll be introducing in a second. Um, and then we do have a special guest, uh, Larry Hall, former uh, North Carolina General Assembly, Assembly Minority Leader, um, who will be working with, with us as well, a very dear friend of Robert. I, I don't think he can come on until 6.30, uh, but we need to bring him on because he's one of the most uh, influential and powerful, um, you know, progressive leaders in this state and will probably, good chance he'll be our governor in a few years. So we, we want to have our future governor on this uh, broadcast. But anyway, Robert, um, you want to talk about, you know, what we're trying to do with Representative B, I'm sorry, Supreme Court Justice Beasley uh, and relational organizing in North Carolina. I don't think, is Willie Fleming with us? I don't think so. Um, go ahead, Robert, Brother Robert, please. Well, uh, Joel and, and Harvey, thank you so very much for having me. Oh, you're on mute. Did you get muted? He's been muted. <laughs> she can unmute. Robert, you need, to, you need to unmute. Okay. Hey, okay, there you All go. Right. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead, please. We want explicitly what you're doing in North Carolina, if you can, Robert. We're great to hear it. Okay. Well, what we're doing now is, is we are putting together a group of people outside of the norm, outside of the normal <laughs> Democratic Party. And we're bringing them all together in primarily the urban areas because we looked at the election results for the last couple of years and they have been close. But we noticed that in urban areas, if we got anywhere from 10 to 15% more turnout in urban areas, then we could elect the candidates that we wanted. So it is critical at this point in time that we are uh, trying to make sure that we can bring people to the table that did not traditionally get touched by individuals that were candidates that were running. A prime example of that would be that we all believe that all politics are local and the Georgia miracle is just that, a miracle that needs to be replicated not just in North Carolina, but all across the place. But again, the problem that we have is people tend to do the same thing and then they end up getting the same results. We have decided that we're going to go outside of the norm and try to bring different groups together on our own. And by doing that, we think we can get somewhere between 10 to 15 percent more turnout than has traditionally been done. And in order to do that, we feel like we have the folks that are gonna be with us in terms of our group that we can get that done. Great, so uh, Robert, uh, thank you for that. So basically the, uh, you're gonna be working with Andrea, Ray, um, um, uh, Richard Rose and uh, Joel Siegel. Tatanka, what we want to have is a, uh, a critical mass uh, of people doing grassroots organizing. For those of you who don't know, by the way, GOTV is get out the vote. It's got nothing to do with uh, any kind of tel television. And Tatanka will be bringing in the great wisdom of um, uh, Dolores Huerta and uh, the California organizing that's been so successful. And Wendy Lederman will be compiling all the contacts and will be sending all the documents around, uh, and, and we're hoping that other grassroots groups around the country will be sending in their contributions in that way. On August 29th, uh, three weeks from today, we're gonna have a national Congress of grassroots organizing, where all the people around the country, uh, independent of either party, this is technically nonpartisan, will be talking about how to win elections for progressive candidates um, uh, outside the traditional um, uh, TV-oriented um, uh, multi-multi-million dollar uh, organiz operations that don't touch people with the grassroots. And that we, were, we are hoping uh, to have um, uh, Keith Ellison, the Attorney General of Minnesota, uh, be our keynote speaker in that. But on August 29th, 
three weeks from today, Wendy will have a major list. We will be re going over this, the genius organizing of Andrea Miller and Ray McClendon that turned uh, the nation. As Ray pointed out, this uh, 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 IRA bill that just passed would never have passed had it not been for grassroots organizing in Georgia in 2020-21. And if you wanna see what happens when you don't do grassroots organizing, look what happened in Virginia in 2021. Uh, Joel Siegel, go ahead. Yeah, one thing that I wanted to add is the, what I've learned from Ray and Andrea was the, you know, the two ingredients for <clears throat> getting progressives elected to office. One is relational organizing, but the other is the candidate has to appeal to the voters. So one of the things that we're gonna do in three weeks that I'm organizing with, with Robert um, will be a town hall meeting with um, ethnic communities in Mecklenburg County. And there will be a lot of give and take and a lot of um, like questions we're gonna send to Supreme Court Justice Beasley to let her know exactly like what is it that the voters want in ethnic communities in Charlotte. Because a lot of the people in the ethnic communities were saying like from the East Indian community, why should we vote for Beasley or anyone else? What have they done for us? And what we're trying to say is in a very respectful way is that elected officials are not mind readers. They, they, they don't have any like, they don't have telepathy. They cannot read minds. So we have to tell them what it is that we want them to run on. And we actually have been very successful already because of Robert's work of, of changing some of her TV commercials. Um, so you can't, you can do relational organizing, but the candidate's got to be exciting. Warnoff and Ostoff, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> ran to the left of Biden. They were, they were progressives. So, and then secondly, we're bringing in HBCUs. We're bringing in historically black colleges, which are all over North Carolina. And we've got fantastic people that we're bringing in. And, and what we're finding is the reception to this idea is off the chain. And we had talked about a Freedom Summer several months ago, and, and we didn't talk much about it, but we've been organizing the whole time, but doing it kind of quietly. And... The electoral system is very interesting because just as you have siloed nonprofit organizations and siloed issue areas, there's also siloed community organizing. We're trying to break all that by forming a steering committee uh, of the willing, so to speak, who want to do the Georgia model. <clears throat> but we've decided to do it through 2024. So we would like for we we want to export the Georgia model and the North Carolina model to what. Um, Ray calls the Southern Crescent states. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Joel. Tatanka Bricka? Yeah, really, really quickly. I did not talk about Romero Institute and the Dolores Huerta Foundation are working on a three-year plan, 2022, 23, 24, with a, a whole series of bills designed to get California to carbon zero by 2030. They also are the origin of the Lakota People's Law Project. And what's happening in South Dakota for the first time ever is a massive statewide by the Lakota people, door-to-door -door campaign, relational organizing of the entire state. Their focus is really this time on themselves. The threats are so dire from Christy Nome, from, from Indian child welfare, from the fact that they've won every victory at Standing Rock and the oil keeps going, et cetera, et cetera. So they're organizing their state. So I'll be reporting on that later with people from LPLP, perhaps with uh, Chase Iron Eyes and our Madonna Thunderhawk. Well, thank you so much for that. Please send all documents, anything relevant, any contacts, um, uh, any reports on your organizing to Wendy Lederman. She posted her uh, link in the chat there. Uh, and we really want to, uh, uh, on in three weeks prior to Labor Day, because Labor Day is when the, uh, you know, the big push is we will not be meeting on Labor Day uh, because it's a Sunday and, um, uh, you know, many people go into labor over that weekend. So, uh, sorry. So, uh, uh, you know, we wanna have by September a definitive model, a definitive guide that Andrea Miller has, and Ray have been so instrumental in, in uh, implementing 
that can make 2022 a, a grassroots um, uh, um, election. And I want to suggest, that, having spent much of my life in Ohio, that I know, uh, Andrew, you limit much of your work to states where there's a certain percentage of African Americans. I, I would like to kind of uh, ask you to consider, for example, a state like Ohio, where the um, the does not meet your criteria, but the uh, the cities of Cleveland, Toledo, Akron, Dayton, Youngstown, Columbus, and Cincinnati do uh, come close to that. And if we need people in states like Ohio and Pennsylvania uh, to be doing grassroots organizing, certainly in your urban areas, uh, God knows that a change in the in the Senate race in Ohio, for example, would have gargantuan impact. So it's just something also to consider in terms of uh, discrete areas. Um, I'm, I'm now going to, oh, you are? Okay, so you're working in Cleveland, Cincinnati, Columbus, and Dayton. That's really great. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, places like Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, uh, also, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But the important thing is, by going to grassroots organizing, we change not only the nature of the elections, but the nature of the country.